We've had a lot of questions at 999 Motorsports about how to actually align a Super Sport. So we thought we'd make this video that will show you exactly how we align the Super Sport. And it's really using the same basic tools and principles that almost every professional team uses when they align their race cars. This is Eric Mead. He's the technician here at Unitech Racing, 999 Motorsports USA. And he'll be the one actually showing you how we do the work here when we align the cars. The basic premise we're going to use when aligning the car is to start by adjusting ride height, then we're going to do toe and camber, double check caster, go back to ride height, toe, camber, and we're going to keep doing that in a spiral until we get down to where nothing is not absolutely correct. So it's a, kind of working in a circle, but it's a tightening spiral until we get to that point where it's all correct. Now people kind of ask, when do I need to align my car? And basically, the car is delivered to you properly aligned. Um, alignment may need to be redone if you've had an off-course excursion, if you've hit a curb hard, um, or if you sense that you want the car to handle a little differently. Maybe you feel the handling has degraded some, and uh, that's an indication that something might be changing. Or maybe you've decided that uh, the setup that was delivered on the car isn't quite right for your racetrack. And these adjustments are part of normal tuning of a race car. So maybe you've decided you want a little more toe out in the front for a little more turn in response, or you want a little more camber because you're seeing that your tire wear is not as even as it should be. But, you know, basic alignment is a basic part of tuning a race car, and you're going to have to kind of judge when you think you need to do that. Professional race teams, we check our alignment virtually every time the car comes off the track. That may not be necessary in this case, and shouldn't be necessary because the car is a very stout car and very stable. You wouldn't expect the alignment to be changing. But it is something that is a tool that you need to have in your toolbox, and it's sort of something you have to have in your mind as you're evaluating the car's performance that day. Alignment is a big part of car setup. So here are the tools that we use when we're aligning a uh, Super Sport. First we have uh, the manual that is supplied with the uh, Smart Camber Gauge and it just reminds us of the formulas we use when we're calculating the caster. We have our setup sheet, has all the information we use, all the alignment settings, and this is the basic sheet, which is what we start with when we're doing a car. It's going to have general numbers on it. When we're done, we'll, uh, we'll put the specific numbers on it and we'll have that available for the next time we align the car. A smart camber gauge, a very uh, high quality tool that's uh, used by many professional teams and they work really well. We have a standard tape measure, which measures both in metric and U.S. units. This is our steering stop and it's uh, pieces that we've made that lock the steering in the uh, head position. An angle uh, finder gauge that we use to check angles. A ruler that's also again in metric and U.S. units. This is our ride height gauge that we man manufacture, and we'll show you how that's used later. A standard smart level, which uh, is a very good, high-quality digital level. Uh, we only use snap-on tools here at uh, 999 Motorsports, and we've got an 8 millimeter, an 8 millimeter socket on a ratchet, two 17 millimeter wrenches, a 19 millimeter wrench, a 22 millimeter wrench, a 25 millimeter wrench and a 32 millimeter wrench. We have an electric impact with the socket for taking the wheels off if we need to do that. Normal alignments, you don't have to take the wheels off. And a high quality intercop digital tire pressure gauge. Okay, we've uh, got the car sitting here on the uh, scales. We've got the strings on the car. We'll show you later in the video exactly how we do that setup. But basically, we want to set the car so the tire pressures are the hot pressure, 27 PSI front and rear. The scale pads are on a level surface, either you can either do that on a, a scale platform or here we've used shims to shim it so that it's level on the ground. And we've set our strings so that we've created a perfectly square rectangle around the race car. Okay, in setting up the strings, what you're really trying to do is create a perfectly rectangular box around the car. You do that by measuring from the axle stub that sticks out 
to the string, and you do that left and right, you want those numbers to be the same in the front and the same in the rear. They won't be the same front and rear, but they'll be the same left to right front and left to right rear. In an effort to uh, create that perfect rectangle around the car, smart strings have machined grooves into their aluminum bars. So if the strings are set left and right and front and rear at the same grooves, you get a perfect rectangle. So that the sway bars don't have any effect on the balance of the car, we disconnect one sway bar link from each end of the car. We do that at the sway bar blade by removing the Allen headed bolt that attaches the link to the arm. The first step in the alignment will be to preset the lower control arms. The inboard end of each lower control arm has a rod end and we preset that with approximately two threads showing from the end of the nut. The rear of the lower and the front of the rear lower is there. Then two threads are showing at each end. Just like in the rear, the front lower control arms are preset. Again, two threads showing past the nut in the front of the lower of the front lower control arm, and two threads showing at the rear end of the lower control arm. That presets the starting point for the alignment, both front and rear. Presetting the rod ends on the upper control arms in the rear, we have approximately two threads showing on the rear link, and because it affects the caster setting, we've got about six threads showing on the front end of the link. And that is an adjustment that we can preset, but we may have to change later when we're doing caster. Just like in the rear, we preset the rear of the upper with about two threads showing, and we preset the front of the upper with about six threads showing. One of the nice things about the Super Sport is because the car is very precisely built on a fixture, these preset settings are very consistent from car to car. All right, we start by measuring the ride height of the car. We have our ride height gauge, which has an aluminum block that sets on top of the frame rail. Loosen the set screw and let the rod drop down to the ground. Tighten the set screw and then take the system back out of the car pretty carefully so you don't knock the arrangement out of its position. And then with a ruler, measure the length of the rod. That total length, subtracting the height of the frame rail and the height of the scales, will give you the actual height from the ground to the bottom of the frame rail. Just like in the rear, in the front, we check the right height with our gauge, placing the block on top of the frame rail, letting the rod drop down to the ground, set, tightening the set screw, and then carefully withdrawing the unit and measuring the overall length with a ruler, and again, subtracting the height of the frame rail, the height of the scales, to give you the actual measurement from the frame rail to the ground. To adjust the right height on a Super Sport, we do that by adjusting the perches on the shocks by moving them up and down on the shock body. To do that, we would first have to jack the car up to relieve any pressure on the nuts. Then we raise and lower the perch up and down on the body to raise or lower the right height. After doing that, we measure what we call the perch height, which is measured from the top of the adjusting nut to the bottom of the top of the shock, which is the silver ring you see at the top of the shock. We record that height so we can always come back to that if we're trying to do quick right height adjustments. Whenever we make a major adjustment to the car, especially when we're adjusting right height, we have to settle the car in the suspension. We do that in a pretty crude way by simply standing on the chassis and bouncing up and down. We're careful to only stand at the very strong points of the chassis, right there where it meets the crash box. In the rear, we settle the car the same way. We just stand on a very strong part of the chassis and bounce up and down, and this simply settles the car and takes the shocks out of the equation. To start the alignment process, we st install the steering stops on the steering rack. These stops ensure that the steering rack is locked in the straight ahead position. On the Super Sport, we're able to align each wheel independently. And one of the reasons we're able to do that is we have the steering rack locked in the straight ahead position. We start by using the smart, caster, or smart camber gauge to measure camber as Eric showing with the wheels. Next we check the toe and we do that by measuring from the edge of the wheel to the string and we do that in millimeters comparing 
the front measurement to the rear measurement. In the case of the front wheel here, we want toe out, so the front measurement will be smaller than the rear measurement. We would, if he were to find that any one of these was a bit out, he would make that adjustment and then go back and double check the camber and double check the toe until every adjustment is ensured to be correct. On the Super Sport, one of the nice things is that the wrenches are able to get to all the lock nuts and the adjusting nuts. So we're able to adjust camber, which he's doing now, by loosening the two lock nuts, moving the adjustment uh, forward or backward to move the top of the wheel in or out, and then retighten the nuts, which would then give you the ability to go back and check the camber. Same thing is done on the toe. We've got lock nuts on the tow rod and you loosen those lock nuts, twist the rod and that allows you to move the front of the wheel in or out and lock them back down and then go back and double check all your adjustments. Just like in the front, the rear is adjusted with the wheels on. Camera is adjusted here, toe is adjusted with the tow link, jam nut here and here. We'd loosen those, we'd move the rod, moves the wheel in and out. Same thing here, loosen the lock nuts, Move the adjuster, and that allows you to move the top of the tire in or out, adjusting the camber. We've set the toe, the camber, right heights on the car, and all the preliminary settings are done. So now it's time for us to check the caster on all four corners. Okay, we've got all our preliminary measurements and all of our stuff is set. So now we're going to check the caster. To check caster, we turn the wheel to the extreme one direction. There's one direction. We know that that is 20 degrees or very near 20 degrees. Take the measurement, turn it all the way the other way. So turn it all the way against the stop. You take the camber adjust, the camber measurement. And then by comparing those two measurements, you are able to calculate the caster. The instructions for calculating the caster are in the uh, book that comes with the smart camera gauge. If we were to find that the caster was not what we wanted it to be, we would have to adjust the caster by moving the top of the upright forward or backward a little bit. And you do that by adjusting the length the rod end sticks out of the arm. And those adjustments are very, very small because the angles that it changes the upright are also very, very small. Just like in the front, the rear caster is set by disconnecting the steering link, remove this bolt, have the link out of the way, turn the wheel 20 degrees, which happens to be against the stop, take your measurement with your camber gauge, turn the wheel 20 degrees the other way, take your measurement with the camber gauge, compare the two numbers, apply the formula, and you've got a caster number for the rear. Once we've set our caster, we like to come up with a number that we can go back to very easily without having to do a full caster sweep. So we use the SMART tool to measure the actual angle of the top of the upright. And we reference that in the future in case we need to make a quick adjustment of the racetrack. So here Eric is showing holding the SMART tool on the top of the upright and measuring its angle relative to the ground. This is not a true caster measurement but it is a relative measurement because it will always be the same from car to car. One of the last things we want to do when aligning the car is to set the shocks. We set the shocks with this single knob here. It's a rebound adjustment. It has approximately 80 clicks total. Turn it all the way in clockwise until it stops. Don't push it too hard, just stops. And then back it out the number of clicks that's on the setup sheet or that you found that works best on the track. Our starting point is 40 clicks, so that would be 40 clicks out, 1, 2, 3, until you got to 40, that's the preliminary setup for the shocks. Okay, now that we've set the caster, we go back and double check toe, camber, front and rear, recheck our right heights, and this time when we're checking our right heights, we compare those numbers on the scales, ensuring that the two front wheels have very equal weight. And we're going to have a slight difference on the rear, but it's going to be only a few pounds. After we know that we've got all those things set, we basically have a perfectly aligned car. Our box dictates that even though the wheels were independently set, 
They're all pointing in the same direction relative to the center line of the car. The car is balanced, scale weights are right, the car can handle beautifully. At this point, the last step we do is we hook up our sway bars and we ensure that there's no preload on the bars by setting the links with the adjusters provided on the links.